So currently I have this odd table over in front of my window and it houses cookbooks and random things like excessive eggs, extra brown sugar, a couple miscellaneous items. But I want to turn the space into a coffee bar section for my espresso machine, for all of my pods, things of that nature. I want to put them all together in one spot and I want to replace how this looks. I don't like how this looks. It doesn't fit the design of what I'm trying to do here, but I do happen to have something that will fit this section so much better and I already have it. It's not going to cost me any money and it's going to be absolutely fabulous here. So I'm going to get to work on that and convert this space into what I truly want it to look like. I have this solid wood cabinet that I actually picked up for $10 um, that has been sitting here waiting for a purpose. And I think its purpose would be perfect as a coffee bar. I think it'd be very happy in that capacity, actually. It did have doors on it that I took off, and I think I'm going to keep the doors off because I like how it looks with the open shelving. I think it's super cute, and it's going to work perfect for my baskets, for my pods, and... Things like that. Currently, the whole piece is painted white, but I'm going to paint the body of it a color, and I'd like to see if I can stain the top. I have no idea what condition the wood is in, but I am prepared to sand it down and give it a try. So I'm going to actually strip the white paint off the top. I'm just going to use an 80 grit sandpaper, take my time, work with the grain, and just keep going at it until it is completely off the top, and then I'll decide. <laughs> Close your eyes Get some rest I'm by your side Lay your head on my chest I know you've had Now that it's sanded, I can see that the top of this cabinet is not in the best condition. There's some dark spots, as you can see, that I can't get out, and that's totally going to affect how this stain looks. But I'm going to put it on anyways just to see exactly what it looks like and to see how horrible <laughs> it ends up being. Because I don't mind some imperfections. I don't even mind that discoloration if it does it in a way that still keeps the pieces integrity and character and doesn't look like just a giant big old mess i like a little bit of character like that and i'm actually not hating this i'm not hating it very much at all but i'm gonna have to live with it a little bit to see what i think and then i'll decide what do you guys think so far? What would you do in this case? I want to keep this piece cohesive with the rest of everything I'm adding to the kitchen. So I am going to give it the exact same finish that my cabinets are going to get. They're going to get this beautiful base. <laughs> See what I did there? But it really is a beautiful base. Is that a word? I think it's a word. Whatever. I'm putting that blue on that I used on my cabinets, and then I'm also going to go over that with the same antiquing glaze. It just gives it that character and that definition, that old world charm that says, hey, I've been around for a while, but look at me. I am still gorgeous. Um, I have new hardware for this. The top of it is actually stained the same as another piece in the kitchen. I love using the color Early American by Minwax. 
I actually think it's a very complimentary color. And I find that that wood tone goes with a lot of other ones. So it works really, really well. But here I am just going to get the first coat on the piece. Again, this is like a cabinet paint. So I'm going to let it sit in between and cure. I'll go back in with the second coat. And then when that's done, I'm going to actually bring it in the house and give it the glaze treatment. But still got a little ways to go painting this. So I'm going to get busy. It was in fact. It's over now, so don't despair The world could fall down, it's gonna be okay The sun could go out, we're gonna be okay If all the blue skies make too gray We're gonna be okay is dried and cured so I brought it in the house to finish the project up but I also kind of want to see it over here if you will size it up make sure this is going to fit and look how I thought it would and I am super happy with the placement of it so I'm just going to start the glazing process and again it's the exact same process that I did on the freestanding custom cabinet that I made out of the old dresser but I'm actually going to be using a corn whisk broom on this because there's not a lot of detail to this piece. It's a lot of flat surface and a lot of flat wood. Using different objects, you can create different textures and groove lines, intricate details and characters. And by using a corn whisk husk and dragging it through, it is going to create the most beautiful, subtle, gentle all flowing together cohesively finished that really looks like this piece has been around for a long time instead of it being the new pine piece that it actually was. And I also love that you don't need any fancy tools to accomplish finishes like this. You can use things like a broom, paper towel, rags. You could use a comb. You could use a brush. All kinds of different ordinary household objects will give you all kinds of different textures. And I urge you to just experiment with them. Take a piece of wood, paint it your base color, put the glaze on top, and then try different household items, different things you have lying around to pull through it, to manipulate that, and see what kind of a finish you can come up with. Because you'll actually be so surprised how easy it is. It's a very forgiving project. You really can't mess this up. And the amount of character that it truly brings to the piece is priceless as far as I'm concerned. It really takes a basic ordinary pine cabinet and elevates it to that custom cabinet look that I am really going for. Paint is a very affordable option to transform a piece. Even if it's just existing furniture, it is amazing what a fresh cone of paint and even a technique over that can do for the overall finish and look. The way I do the technique is I apply the glaze and then I take some paper towel or a rag and I fold it with a flat edge, one that has enough cushion to it that my fingers don't go through and make hard, harsh lines. And I drag that through the glaze to remove a lot of it and to give it a lot of that streaky kind of 
look. And I'll keep going back and pulling it in the same direction as the wood, um, up and down until it gets to the softness that I desire. Then I bring the corn whisk broom in and I'm going to go up and down on the piece all over. I'm going to soften those lines even more, really blend the patina together to give it that truly aged and weathered look. And the end result is really just phenomenal. I love, 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 love this finish. I cannot say it enough. I am totally obsessed. I love the color. I love everything about it. And my kitchen is going to look so good. I am just so excited for all of this. But I need to focus right now on the coffee bar because that's where we're at. Look at this finish. Look at what I got just from using paint, a little glaze, and a broom. I'm going to give the entire piece a coating of magnolia clear wax, and I'm actually going to let that sit and dry overnight. I'll buff it off tomorrow. But once I get the wax on the entire piece, I have one more project that I want to tackle for the coffee bar area before we call it a night and resume tomorrow. I am big on lighting throughout my home and I have several lamps in all the different rooms that create different lighting for my needs. I, I'm not an, a sharp overhead lighting kind of girl. So lighting in different corners is very important. Now the new coffee bar that I'm making does not have a very large pop. And once I get everything on there, there really isn't much room for the lamp, but I definitely want something over in that corner to light it up. So I found this gorgeous little light on Amazon, super affordable. I love the juxtaposition of the metal and the crystals together, and I think it is the perfect accent for my French country kitchen. Super easy install, couple hooks in the ceiling, and we're done. But I love, love, love this lamp. Look at how cute the cord is all wrapped. I hate seeing cords everywhere, and the fact that they wrapped this cord and made it part of the design and part of the overall look, I love. So I'm going to get it up here really quick, see how it looks, and I think it's going to be super cute. Wow, this really brightens up the corner nicely. I love it, and I love the shadows that this particular light casts all over the ceiling and the floor and the walls. I think that's really pretty. So very happy with this choice. I am going to call it a night. I am going to let the wax sit and dry, and we will pick this right back up tomorrow. The wax has completely dried, so I am just going to use a soft cloth and I am going to buff that off. The surface becomes beautiful and smooth. I love, love, love the way wax finishes this paint finish off. It's exactly what it needs. Um, so I'm going to get that all off of here. And then I actually ordered some casters off of Amazon, some really pretty brass casters. And I'm going to put this cabinet on casters. One, because I'm having a moment with casters. But two, because it makes for super easy cleaning, you can just wheel it right out of the way, wheel it right back. No lifting, you're not scraping your floor, none of that nonsense. So I'm going to add the casters to this, and I'm also going to put the new hardware in the drawer. And by new, I mean hardware that I found in my stash, and I actually can't remember when I bought it or what I bought it for, but none of that matters because it has a purpose now. I'll include the link below for these casters. Like I said, I got them off Amazon. They weren't the cheapest ones they had. They do, in fact, have cheaper ones than these, but I really like the look of the brass on these, so that's why I went with them. And they are a really, really good quality, very heavy caster that ended up being fabulous and exactly what I wanted for this piece. So Super happy with it, and I will put that link down there for you just in case you're interested in adding some casters to your own existing furniture. It makes all the difference. Little things like that can totally transform a piece, and the installation was simple. All you do is measure out your drill bit to the size of the screw that's being inserted that is part of the caster, make it just a little bit smaller than the caster's screw, screw it right in. I mean, it is in there solid and it really looks gorgeous. So happy with this. This whole piece, I am so happy with this whole piece and it is still all done on an extreme budget. Let's actually look at the breakdown for this piece. So the cabinet was $10. I thrifted that. I'm going to say that I maybe used $10 worth of paint and stain and I even think that number's generous, but still. 
The casters were $24.99. Like I said, they weren't the cheapest ones there, but it's the look that I wanted. And the handle hardware I already had. I don't know what I paid. I don't know when I got them. So not counting that. This entire piece is under $50. Less than 50 bucks for solid wood, custom paint finish, one of a kind piece. Something you absolutely would pay way more than that if you found this in a store. I would say that this pocket change project was a huge success. Another day, another sleigh. This came out gorgeous. I don't even mind that discoloration that's on the top edge. In fact, to me, it's kind of like more worn down, almost like the hands worked more over there, and that's why it's a different color. Plus, once I get stuff on top, it's not going to stick out and be as noticeable. Um, but honestly, to me, after living with it for a while, I'm totally okay with it. There's nothing wrong with it. I think it actually gives the piece character. And seeing it all together is just mind-blowing from. It was actually brown when I bought it. I did spray it white um, to brighten it up. I had no idea what I was going to do with it. And then it just sat and sat and sat and sat. And I think it sat for this purpose because it knew it was going to be part of my kitchen remodel and be the new coffee bar. So that's what I bought it for. Total bargain. I love it. I just love it where it is. And I love that it's on casters. I am really having a moment with casters. I think everything should be on casters. You know how easy it is to clean when you can just slide things around? That's huge for me. I don't want to keep blending over. I'm getting older. I want the easy way out. I've earned it at this point. <laughs> so I'm going to put my coffee bar together here. And it just came out so stinking cute. I was just going to put the sleeves of the pods in the drawer because they do fit. And I was going to put the mugs on the shelf. But I had this adorable antique basket. And I decided to just dump all the pods out, put them on the shelf instead. And I'll put the coffee mugs inside the drawer. I am fortunate to have a husband that spoils me, and I have every Nespresso pod you can think of, from single cup espressos, double cup espressos, to a full cup of coffee, and my Nespresso machine is like one of my most prized possessions right now. It is a life-changing cup of coffee each and every time I make one, and if you you have it within your budget to get one, I strongly suggest switch out from that old curing machine and get yourself an espresso. George Clooney would be very proud of you. All right, and here we have it, my new coffee bar, or rather my new coffee bar corner. I feel that's more appropriate. I think it came out absolutely amazing. Not only did I free up counter space, which is the whole goal of this counter remodel, I want to move off as many appliances out of my working space that I can because I'm still not going to have a ton of surface. So every last bit counts. Doing this freed up a whole bunch of space and filled in the gap over in this corner with a piece of custom, beautifully finished furniture that looks absolutely high end totally goes with that gorgeous freestanding unit I built the other day. If you haven't seen that, I will link that above. Be sure to check out the transformation from this antique old dresser into this gorgeous, stunning piece for my kitchen. Totally unbelievable. This coffee bar is right up there with it. I love how it looks. I am loving the casters. I am going to be able to move this and clean under it. Super easy which when you have a house full of pets like I do, that makes a big difference. I want all the ease in the world and that's what it's going to provide me while also giving me the aesthetic look that I want. I couldn't be happier with how this came out and I am so excited to continue on with my transformation. I found something on Marketplace that is going to completely be repurposed into this kitchen, and I can't wait to share that with you. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, now's a great time to do that. You don't want to miss this makeover. I am literally doing it on a shoestring budget, and the outcome, as you can see, looks incredibly high-end with these very expensive custom finishes that are just so easy to DIY and so cheap, and I can offer wait to see this kitchen continue even further. I hope to see you along for that journey as well. Thank you so much for joining me. Let me know in the comments down below. What do you think of my new coffee bar corner? I will see you guys again real soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Mm -hmm.
Thank you.